Right, so the BBC is an entity I've often covered for its shortcomings, but seldom do we see someone hold the BBC to account for such things mid-interview. Yet that is exactly what happened when, in typical BBC interview style, they went for a gotcha. But they chose film director Ken Loach as their target, and in what is, frankly, a stunning interview, Loach completely eviscerated them over it, and actually, they really asked for it. And this really does matter as well, because so often we've seen an interview begin in a certain way, on a certain subject, yet then the interviewer will seek to talk about something else. And well, in this instance, they came deservedly unstuck. Right, so, Ken Loach, film director, lovely chap. Anyone that thinks otherwise hasn't watched any of his films or got the message behind them. Few in his industry devote their careers, frankly, to highlighting the blight on society that successive governments can bring, and that is what has made him a target, frankly, for dismissive media outlets, those with an axe to grind, those threatened by the truth. But the BBC always has and continues to enjoy an absurd level of trust amongst the public that it really doesn't deserve. And although that trust has certainly been eroded a bit in recent years, it's still tr trusted far beyond other purported mainstream news outlets, so really doesn't deserve it. And nothing quite exposed that like Loach's recent interview on the World at One programme on Radio 4 with Sarah Montague. Now, the interview was supposed to be about Loach's new film, The Old Oak, set in a pub in a County Durham former mining town, the last remaining public meeting place, whilst dealing with the subject of immigration as Syrian refugees settle in the area and cop the blame for the, the locals and the hardship that they're suffering under in, uh, in this day and age. It's a perfectly pertinent topic right now, especially where refugees are so demonised and Loach's films are as educational as they are supportive of those who are put down upon and attacked in the media. And he sets a counter narrative combined with brilliant storytelling so it engages people who watch it that hits home hard and I frankly challenge anyone to watch one of his films and it not elicit some kind of an emotional response in you. The thing is, this was a BBC interview though, so the topic of his film wasn't wasn't what was really on their minds. The BBC always like a gotcha, and it wasn't long. It was about five minutes into the interview before the subject of Keir Starmer and Labour came up, with Sarah Montague putting it to Loach that you are very dismissive of Keir Starmer. But I wonder if part of that stems from the fact that, as you said in your words, you were kicked out of the party. Loach has no problem discussing such things as a rule, and even though it wasn't why he was on the programme, he responded in his typically honest, straightforward, matter-of-fact manner on Starmer and Labour by saying of his expulsion, it was like ending an abusive relationship. The Labour Party, its whole process of dealing with disagreements, is very flawed. It's something I think that BBC News should examine more closely. The fact that I think now that Jewish members of the Labour Party are four times more likely to be expelled than non-Jewish members. Sure, why don't you look at that BBC? Future government holding your purse string, so better not upset the Stalin-esque Sir Keir Starmer, is that it? The stat Loach quoted comes from Jewish Voice for Labour, one of those, one of whose founding members got expelled from Labour the minute they got elected to the party's National Executive Committee. The only Jewish person elected to said body, and they were quickly sent packing, because on all Jewish matters, it seems, we can't actually have a real proper Jewish person having a say on such things. That's what we've got Luke Akehurst and his pro-Israel interests on the NEC for, you see. It's very difficult to see otherwise when you know someone like Naomi Wimborne Adrisi, the lady in question, would have given Akehurst short shrift along with his claims, and... Well, being Jewish, her word ought to carry a lot more weight than Akehurst's non-Jewish, pro-apartheid state attitudes. Indeed, Loach said as much in response to Sarah Montague's continued pressing on the point, because she continued by saying, But it is the campaign against anti-Semitism that have complained to the BBC about their involvement in one of your other films coming up, because they say that you have been appalling in your anti-Semitism denial. And that's not why you were kicked out of the party, but because you didn't um, disown those. Ah, so the CAA have complained to the BBC then, have they? I wonder if they bothered to investigate such claims before putting them to Loach. But of course, what am I saying? Of course they didn't. Why would they? It gave them the opportunity to take on someone the likely next Prime Minister really doesn't like, had thrown out of his party, and the BBC has always and will always serve the interests of those with control over it. It is isn't independent. It is beholden to those who hold the purse strings or who are likely to very soon. And above all else, they are slavishly loyal to establishment interests who both main political parties and their leaders serve. And we get to pay for that, of course. Loach was as direct as he was caustic in his response. And really, more people should address BBC interviews with as much disdain and disgust as 
Lodge expressed, because he responded by asking, do you have any evidence for that? Montague replied, well, this was a quote from the campaign against anti-Semitism. So what, though? It might as well have been a quote from Noddy and Big Ears for all the weight that carries. But Loach asked again, I'm asking for your evidence, but you can justify by repeating it, because otherwise, if you have no evidence, then I think you should withdraw it. You're now purveying another misleading, insulting misrepresentation. And I think you have a duty to say, well, we have some evidence for that. You don't have any. You see, we're here to talk about film. And what happens is this kind of slur is repeated and repeated. And I'm afraid you've just done it again. And I think the way you and the BBC constantly divert serious conversations into this fraudulent campaign in order to discredit people that you choose to interview on another premise, I think that's disgraceful. Who can argue the points? Very eloquently put, but no less hard hitting. We saw them do it with Corbyn repeatedly. We see them do it with token lefty journalists on all their news programmes on a regular basis as well. Never represented in a balanced way themselves either. It isn't news, it's propaganda. Nothing demonstrates that more ably than choosing to cite, of all people, of all organisations, the campaign against anti-Semitism, who risibly have charitable status, but are currently the subject of a regular, uh, regulatory compliance case by the Charity Commission due to the sheer amount of complaints made against them for political partisanship, which charities are forbidden from holding. It has also been revealed, thanks to the investigative journalism of the Electronic Intifada, that the CAA is funded by Israel, having accepted charitable donations which it tried to hide in obscure Charity Commission documentation, but which were unveiled to have come from the UK partner of the Jewish National Fund, which is a non-profit Israeli organisation which funds the takeover of Palestinian territories for Israeli occupation. The funders of the CAA, their UK division, raises money here to pass on to Israel to continue displacing Palestinians in order to house Israelis. That's who the BBC cited as their source to attack Loach, because Loach is pro-Palestinian. The same organisation that got the Corbyn film, The Big Lie, cancelled at Glastonbury. Well, Corbyn is also pro-Palestinian. The Unite Union of Sharon Graham banning the same film from Unite Buildings and also a book signing by journalist Asa Wynne Stanley, who is an electronic intifada journalist, of course, was also done allegedly at the urging of the CAA. Following the Loach interview, which had been pre-recorded, Montague then read out a statement by the Labour Party, given an opportunity to reply to Loach's comments before the interview had even gone out. Not that Loach had right of reply to Labour in turn, so another totally one-sided approach to balanced journalism from the BBC, which read, The implication of deliberate targeting made by Mr Loach is completely false and not based on reality. Indeed, it isn't even clear from this quote on which statistically reliable basis Mr Loach is attempting to justify such a claim. Labour didn't make a note of the number of Jewish members it had expelled in that statement either. I don't suppose anyone at the BBC bothered to ask them, even though it was at the crux of Loach's response. But as Jewish Voice for Labour have stated, Labour have had that data, along with a good deal more, provided by them since August of 2022. But I don't suppose the BBC are quite as keen to engage with the JVL on actual Jewish persecution by the Labour Party, actual anti-Semitic conduct by definition, than it is to eagerly lap up whatever Israel lobby-funded nonsense the CAA choose to cough up. Ken Loach has only risen in my estimations off the back of this, and I already thought of him quite highly. More interviewees who find themselves on the receiving end of this style of interview digression should follow suit so that more BBC viewers become acutely aware of what they're actually playing at. But of course, the best advice I can offer if you haven't already done so is to just switch the BBC off entirely and get your news elsewhere. What do you think of the BBC's conduct here, though? Have you noticed it before? Have you picked up on it? Have you seen other instances of it? Do tell me all about it. Or do you think the BBC is justified in its questioning, even if their line of doing so comes from decidedly dubious sources? You know what to do. Leave a comment. Have your say. Be part of the conversation, too. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. More content out daily, of course. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where it isn't just vested interest laying into loach for dishonest, disreputable reasons, but Labour shadow ministers are entirely comfortable in doing so too. And one of the worst of late, certainly, has been Little Miss Fiscal Rules herself, Rachel Reeves, as shown in this video here. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.